Hello, hello, hello everyone. Good evening. Um, we are live right now on YouTube, on, on LinkedIn and on Facebook. So you're welcome to this information session on the MET scholarship for studies in Japan for undergraduate students. We are happy to have you on this session with us. And here with me is Mr. Okechuku Eze, who is also a Japan scholar, a JICA scholar. He's going to be telling us a lot about studies in Japan and so many um, opportunities that await you as uh, undergraduate students and even for postgraduate students. But for this session, we're going to be concentrating on the undergraduate student, and we hope to gain a lot from him. And I will be sharing as well from my own experience applying for the Commonwealth Scholarship and winning it and going to the UK for my master's studies. So the idea here is to prepare you and um, help you in your scholarship journeys such that the information you gather from here will help you in crafting your statement of purpose, in filling out your application forms, and there are so many other benefits uh, which we cannot um, number them. So in the next 30 minutes, Mr. Okechuku Ezeo is going to be speaking to us. Uh, he's going to be providing general information about studying in Japan, as well as his experience as a Japanese scholar. Over to you, Mr. Kechuku. Thank you, Genika, for having me on this platform. Um, Thank you. Yeah, hi, everyone. Um, like she said, my name is Okechuku Eze, and uh, former JICA scholar and the SSP scholar. So, and I have, I had the privilege of, um, studying in japan so I have um i mean I have experience living working and studying in japan so like as she mentioned today i'm going to share i am going to share with you the opportunities um, that comes with studying in japan especially scholarship opportunity and also opportunity as an international student Japan um, is a very, people call it, um, people say that Japan is one of the developed country that have actually succeeded in developing simultaneously with their culture. So it's well recognized for a country with strong cultural um, mix, despite their, I mean, their level of development when you compare it with other uh, OECD countries. So um, I was a JICA scholar in 2017, from 2017 to 20. 19 it was um, a two years program and six months internship. So um, JICA scholarship is something that is a yearly um, is a yearly scholarship opportunity that you apply directly to JICA is a little bit different from MEXT. My scholarship is being funded by Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports and Science and Technology. So, and my scholarship has two, a kind of, it has two streams. The first one is the one that is being nominated by the Embassy of Japan in, in your home country. And the second one is the one that is being nominated by the university, where, so the university, 
have the opportunity, they have the opportunity to nominate international students for this scholarship. And the embassy of Japan in your home in your home country also have this opportunity, have opportunity, has the opportunity to nominate uh, students for this scholarship. Now, uh, the most popular one is basically the one people apply through the embassy of Japan. And uh, it has a process. They have opportunity for undergraduate students and also research students. And for research students, you are required to take, um, when you do the application, during the application phase, after the application, there was this screening and selection process. If you're selected, then you go for the exam. The exam is usually English and Japanese based, where you'll be in a you will be assessed on English and basic Japanese. For undergraduates, you'll be assessed on English, Japanese, and mathematics. So the undergraduate process is a little bit rigorous compared to the research students. So, but the, the good thing about this whole thing is, just like every other scholarship, the uh, Japanese government scholarship, whether it is JICA, whether it is MEXT, whether it is internal scholarship provided by the university, comes with a lot of opportunities. The stipend um, is a little bit different from what other countries like uh, US, UK pay their scholarship beneficiary. But um, there is this link between the universities where you're studying as, um, as a student and industry. So most of their, most of their scholarships comes with um, a kind of package where you, you do a two years program and then you move to industry and do six, year, uh, six months industrial uh, practice or they call it internship. And um, after that, uh, for MEXT and JICA, you are, okay, for JICA, you are mandated to go back to your country and contribute to your home country economy. So, this is where a lot of students um, you know, find it a little bit difficult because uh, sometimes when you have you know, complete your program, you start facing that challenges of going back to your country to you know, contribute or look for a job. Or, but the good thing is this, JICA Max, for MEXT, um, you're not actually is not a must for you to go back to your home country, but you can decide to extend your visa, find a job in Japan and stay back. For JICA too, you can decide to find a job in Japan, extend your visa and stay back. But the idea of the whole thing is for you to learn, learn Japanese culture, learn, understand, I mean, learn, go through the educational system develop your skills and contribute to any economy you find yourself. So that's basically the opportunities that comes with MEX scholarship. So during the scholarship um, program, the university and also the scholarship fund that try as much as they can to engage you, there's something they call networking activities. We are industries, local businesses organize like a, something like it, a fair, business fair, because the idea is once you're a research student or you're an undergraduate student in Japan, you have, they call it a name card, a complimentary card. This complimentary card is what you use for business networking when you attend a business fair. And that's where you do you meet a lot of companies, you know, having exchanging contact with them, networking with them, telling them what you're studying, country you're coming from. 
You know that Japanese is well developed when it comes to technology. And because it is not an English speaking country, a lot of companies in Japan are looking for a way to expand their network beyond Japan. So a lot of them are looking towards Africa because we have the population, we have the markets, and that's they're trying to compete with China. So during the business networking fair, I, I would say that that's the the way we have a lot of different when you compare Japanese scholarship with um, UK and US. So when you attend this business fair, that's where you do a lot of networking. You meet a lot of companies, CEO, you meet a lot of companies, directors, share your complimentary card with them. And you kind of introduce yourself. They also introduce whatever thing that they're into. Some of them are into that. Some of them are service providers. Some of them are consulting firms. Some of them are, you know, normal uh, manufacturing companies. So they try to, you know, um, ask you some questions like your background or countries you're coming from, where, which country, the country, yeah, the countries you're coming from and your intention after your graduation and where you be working, probably like your past work experience and things like that. These are the information some of them wants to know or want to get from you. And um, it gives uh, most of us, like coming from Africa, it gives, a, gives us a, a, I mean, it's, it's a big opportunity to meet companies directly and it's an opportunity for you to also sell yourself during the networking fair so um basically that's the difference i see between like when you compare um, japanese scholarship and the uk scholarship so the another areas i want to talk about is the application process the application process for both uh, studying as an international student or a self-funded uh, international student and um, a scholarship when you're applying for scholarship is completely different when you compare it to UK. In UK, uh, from my experience as a master's student, if you're applying for a master's program, you do not need to submit a research proposal. But in Japan, if you're applying for a master's program, whether you're applying for a scholarship or you're applying as um, a self-financed student, you're mandated to submit a research proposal. And it's basically most of the... Uh, and again, you do not just apply to university you have to first of all get in touch to a professor before you apply to a university that's one experience one thing i discovered about japan because you have to make sure that there is a professor in the university that is willing to work with you based on your interest so in uk you only get to do this if you're maybe moving or progressing to phd stage but in Japan, you start from your master stage. You start from the application process. So the Japan application process is a bit rigorous, but it helps you to really understand. The application process helps, helps you to understand what you need to do as a graduate student. And um, when you apply for Forex, uh, MEC scholarship is usually um, the application usually open up, like if you search the embassy, the embassy website, once they open up the application, you can download the application from there or apply direct through the embassy platform. Then another, uh, the second part is applying direct to the university and then the university can assess your application and decide as a self-funded student whether they they want to recommend you to MEXT or not. So now, 
there is one thing I want to say about this because it's not every university in Japan that have that um, that can recommend international students to MEXT. Some universities are have there is this collaboration, there is this uh, link between um, some universities and MEXT. Some universities do not have that uh, link or do not have that privilege to recommend international students. Although some of these universities have their own internal scholarship that they can actually recommend you to, to apply for if you're successful in your application. So you, if you're applying for MEX scholarship, you can apply through, through the embassy direct and get recommendation and get like you complete the whole process. The first step is the application. The second step is the selection. When you are selected, you do the exam. After the exam, then you wait for the results. Then for the school, you apply direct as an international student to the school. If you are accepted as an international student, then your supervisor will ask you to apply through the school, the university recommendation. So, so this like it to the process is a bit different because the first one is you can stay in your home country, apply direct to the embassy. And then the second one is you have to apply for admission. When you're successful in the admission, then the, uh, the university can now recommend you for main scholarship. Then there's another scholarship for international students. They call it a JASO. It, um, is the, the scholarship is developed for self-funded uh, students. And that's because I think why they have a lot of internal scholarship is because uh, in some school, uh, Japanese program is a bit intensive compared to other country. And because of that, you may not have that opportunity to work, like to do extra work. Like in the UK, I know a lot of students do 20 hours. In the UK, in, the, in Japan, students work, but because of the intensive nature of the program, sometimes you may not have that time. So they try as much as they can to support international students, especially if you have a good grade and you have a very strong application and the application assessment starts with your results personal statements if you are a postgraduate student your research proposal this is where they pay more attention okay. um, i don't know if you have any question here yeah. yes that's exactly what i wanted to find out from our viewers please kindly drop your questions in the chat um we're, we're going to attend to them as we go on if you have any questions please drop in the chat tell us where you are joining us from kindly make the chat very interactive thank you very much okay so uh mr k what i'm actually very much interested in is the fact that the max scholarship is not a must that you must come back to nigeria because yes as a commonwealth as a Commonwealth scholar, um, we, 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 we didn't find it very easy coming back to Nigeria, but we just had to because we had already given our word right from the onset. So that's why I am very, very interested in making this information very, very um, available to our aspiring candidates so that you, you know that at the end of your studies, you can decide to stay in Japan or go to any other country you want to. You don't have any restriction at all. That's the most interesting part of this uh, MEX scholarship. Um, Mr. K, please kindly go on. Um, share some more experience. You, you still have 10 minutes left. Please okay. kindly do your questions for Mr. K before he leaves the room. Thank you. Go on, sir. Yeah, so um, in my experience, like I said, I had the privilege to benefit from the JICA scholarship, which is just like MEXT. 
uh, JICA means uh, Japan International Organization Agency. So is it Japan is International? It fully funded? Japan International Corporation Agency. Sorry, it's fully funded. It's a fully funded program, and um, okay. you have your to and fro flight ticket. Oh wow! Yeah, and you get your you know stipend, which is around about hundred and forty to hundred and fifty something thousand uh, Japanese yen. So okay. it's a fully funded program, and um, there is um, depending on the university. Some university do three months, yeah, like kind of six months research, then two years program, and then six months internship. Altogether, three years. Some university do not have this uh, platform for re six months research. Rather, they have um, two years program and six months uh, internship. So that's two years and six months. And you get paid for this period. But for the period of three years, you get paid for the period of three years. Your stipend, you get paid your stipend for the period of three years. So during your internship, the company you're doing your internship with are not going to be responsible. They're not going to pay you anything. Rather, it's part of the package from your scholarship. The company may decide to provide accommodation. No, the 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 scholar, I mean the founder, Jacka or JICA will provide accommodation for you. Everything, you get your stipend just the way you were getting it when you were in, I mean, in skin, running your program until you complete the internship. So uh, it's fully funded and um, it exposes uh, you also to a lot of um, industry. Usually in our case, because we had that flight ticket booked to and fro. Um, you will be given the option. If you get a job, you stay back. But if you do not have a job and you want to go back, then they take up your kind of, you use your flight ticket, they book your return ticket for you. Usually coming from Nigeria, you know, the idea is not, um, because of the situation, it's, it's a bit difficult. So everybody wants to stay back, <laughs> even though you have, even though you have return ticket. But the thing is, yeah, yeah, the thing is, going back also there is it has its own advantage because that's why I said Japan is completely different from UK. A lot of Japanese companies want to expand to Africa. So because of that. You can going back will be an advantage, but they may decide to post you. You can become a, a, a company representative on a particular product. They may decide to send you to near neighboring countries like Senegal, uh, Africa, West African countries, or East Africa, or whatever. So depending on your interest. Some descent. I have some friends that are still working in Southeast Asia. I mean, and they are Nigerians. We all finish together. Do you still have free entry and exit in Japan? Yes, I have free entry and exit in Japan, not because of my previous program, but because I did after the the my master's program, I had the opportunity to do another program related to research and on that program i was given um, a four years resident permit wow. yeah so yeah so i have uh you know i have the free movement from england to japan yeah but not part of my previous studies but the good thing about japan is that when you complete, if you complete your studies, you have some kind of, um, they will give you this opportunity to look for job and you can renew your visa based on, you know, once you're able to get something and the company is ready to give you a letter that yes, 
recognize you, acknowledge that you're working with them, you can renew your visa. Like unlike UK, where you have some kind of meet some threshold or company, yeah, some company have to or company they have to meet their own threshold before they can hire you and sponsor your visa. So that's not it's not like that in Japan. A lot of companies in Japan as far yeah. A little about the language, the language barrier. Is it a must that you must be fluent in Japanese in order to gain the yeah. scholarship? Is that no. also uh okay? It's not a must that you have to you must be fluent in Japanese because you can actually what they want is just for you to understand Japanese culture and have some basic knowledge like their greeting, konnichiwas and things okay. like that. Yeah. What? Like normal, <laughs> normal greeting that you know, good morning, how are you? Basic having a basic understanding. But you the thing is, you have to learn that before the interview. It's always good to do, you know, to learn. Look at the YouTube, learn basic Japanese before the exam. The thing is that, like I said, Japan is one of the OECD countries that is very they have very strong culture when it comes to these are people that hold their culture very tight so they don't joke with their language their language opens opportunity if you can speak japan basic japanese if you can speak basic japanese it opens a lot of opportunity as an international student so it's actually for your own good if you can learn a little but there are lots of they have a lot of um, i mean there are lots of universities that teach in English. And maybe after this webinar, I'm going to send you, I did a kind of quick compilation of Excel of all the undergraduate, the universities that take both postgraduate and undergraduate students and also language of instruction. So it's kind of a, an Excel sheet. I will send it, maybe you can share it on the platform, but Share it with our yeah, yeah. So on the yeah. So so yeah. So the Excel sheets with the Excel sheet, you can actually uh, select the your university of your choice. Base you can actually see the language in, of instruction. You can see some of the things that are offering. You can see the prefecture they are. You can see their course and major concentration and minor concentration and things like that. So this help when you're looking for or making trying to make select university so i'll yeah, share this uh, file with you yeah yes so um you 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 are, you have almost exhausted your time and we really appreciate your 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 making out your your time out of your your very busy schedule to join in this info session and i believe that our viewers have really gained a lot from this chat, especially with this, with the fact that they need to start preparing themselves, including the Japanese language. Please kindly download Duo or any of the language apps and start learning just the basics, greeting, um, entry yeah. bus, station, or yeah. asking for a coffee. Uh, Introduce me yourself. Yeah. yeah yourself. My name is this. I'm from Nigeria and I'm a postgraduate or undergraduate student. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for this background information. And we hope to have other sessions as well. Please kindly share the rest of the um, scholarships that we could also talk about in our next um, webinar. Apart He's from right. next scholarship, we also want to do info session on the other scholarships that are available for students. Um, thank you very much, and, and see you in our next session. Um, please, our viewers, you need to stay back so that I could do a little touch up on on the next scholarship and then the required documents. It is an undergraduate scholarship, so you're not going to be required to do a lot. You're not going to be required to do a research 
proposal, no. They are not even going to be required to, <laughs> yeah. to do a lot around the statement of papers and all of that. But you you actually write exams. And yeah. he has talked about exams. And it's yeah. going to be math, math, English, and basic Japan, right? Japanese, yeah. Basic math, Japanese. English, and Japanese. So the English is basically the TOEFL kind of the English. Okay. The, for those that have taken TOEFL exam, it's a kind of TOEFL. Then the the math is basic, you know, basic maths, Wayek maths. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And would they need a uh, TOEFL certificate? I don't know. I don't think. It's no, like no. Just the the kind of English yes. they will write. The kind of English exam they will write is a bit similar, like TOEFL or IELTS. So, you know, normal uh, English. And you, if you go to yeah, if you go to Japanese embassy website, you can actually download the quest, the past question. So it's, it's that's not a problem at all. Okay, yes, it's also part of what I'm going to be speaking about. So thank you, yeah. sir. Uh, I would exit you from the stage now while I continue right. my own yeah. session. Bye. All right. Th thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Hello everyone. Hello Purity. Hello Excel. Hello Ngozi. Um, Stacia, Emilia, Chidima. I'm glad to have you all on this session. Um, I'm I'm just going to do a quick wrap up on some of the the discussions that we have been having all all along. So the MEP scholarship is just um a scholarship that is funded by, by, by the Embassy of Japan. It's funded by the Japanese government. And the recruitment starts April this year for those that will be joining classes next year. So the application is open. Usually different countries open their application at different dates. But for that of Nigeria, it's not yet open. That's why we are organizing this info session so that everyone will start getting themselves ready such that once the portal is open, you, you will quickly um, put in your application. So it's going to be um, open between this April and May. So we are, we are looking at maybe by the end of April or by first week of May, Nigeria should launch um, their own um, application. So there's going to be a first screening that's going to happen in May, between May and August by the Japanese embassy. So the application is not sent to MEX directly, it's sent to the embassy because it is the embassy that is going to recommend you for this scholarship. So the Japanese embassy in Nigeria will recommend you for the scholarship. It is also similar to the Commonwealth scholarship that I did. We don't apply direct to Commonwealth. We apply to the Federal Ministry of Education or some agencies and NGOs that will recommend you. So that's the same thing here. Yeah? So the documents you need, okay, Please kindly send me your questions on the chat so that we could address them one after the other. So you are going to need only very few documents, your application form, which is very simple. I'm going to show you a sample of what the application form looks like. Then your certificate of health. So they already have their own template. All you need to do is to download it and take it to a health practitioner to, to fill it in for you. Then the recommendation letter. The recommendation letter is what you're going to fill and send to the embassy. All these things are going to be submitted to the embassy of Japan here in Nigeria. You're going to print them out. Either you write by hand, you hand fill them, or you type them in the form, or you fill them using uh, the application software, and then you print it out. It's a very simple application because it's for undergraduate students. They don't want to make things so um, complex for you. And it is going to be fully funded. They're going to take care of 
your flights, your upkeep. They'll be giving you stipend at the end of the month, um, your study materials, school fees, um, um, medical. Everything is going to be completely taken care of for your four years of studies. And they will also pay for the visa as well. So if you are applying for this scholarship, if you are shortlisted for screening, you can start processing your international passport. Yes, you can start processing it and make sure you have it. But for this one, I think you can just use national ID card for the application. It's that simple. It's that simple. Please kindly share your, your, your comments, share your questions on the chat so that we can Okay, yes, Emilia, thank you very much for asking that question. Emilia asked whether it has age limit. It is for undergraduates. It's for students between the age, age of 17 to 25. Yes, you must be 17 years old because you're going to also present a birth certificate. So you must have finished your secondary school, you must have written work, and then get um, <clears throat> prepared for um, undergraduate studies. So there is age limit, please. You must be 17 years by the time you are going to um, submit the application. So we assume that this info session is for those who have finished secondary school or those who are writing WAEC now, because by the time you are submitting the application, you must have written WAEC. So you can indicate it there that you are waiting results. So if you're writing WAEC and you're up to 17, you can apply for the scholarship or you have a proof that you're 17 or you're about to be 17, you can just have a proof that you are, you are not. Um, please, is it only, okay, Excel asks, is it only Japan or other countries? Next scholarship, this particular one we are talking about today is for Japan. Yes, it's for Japan. It's quite different from scholarships that are offered by other countries. The one I did was that of UK. The UK scholarship is um, <clears throat> different because after your studies, you are expected to come back to your country. But for the Japanese scholarship, you are not expected to come back. You can continue working there or doing your business there or continue studying for your master's there. So that's why I'm very, very um, excited about this scholarship. And if you want to apply, um, kindly drop me a chat on WhatsApp. If you have my WhatsApp number, if you don't, I can send it to you. Drop me a chat and I will support you. Uh, yeah, 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 yes, Emilia, yes. I, 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 I run education programs. Okay, sorry, say do they run education programs? Okay, I'm not sure of that, but if you check, the, the the courses, I think education has to be there because it is undergraduate study, it's open. There are all manner of courses that one could pick from. So I think the, the, it should be among the list of um, courses. So if you download the form, let me share the link here. Let me share the site here. Okay, this is what the this is what the application form looks like. It's written in both Japanese and English. Sorry, it's very tiny. Let me try to increase it a little more. I hope you can see it. It's very tiny. So it just has your name your gender, your nationality, your date of birth, your date of birth, your passport, your current address, your address before departure to Japan, that's your current address now. And then the name of the Japanese embassy where you're going to be applying for visa, so-so here. 
Then your phone number, your email, it's a very simple form. You can even write with your pen. Then you're going to choose the name of school that you're going to, at, okay, the, your present status, the name of school you attended or the name of school you're attending. If you're employed, what is the name of the organization? Then are you specialized in field of study in high school or university? So are you in secondary school or are you already in university? Then your academic record, your academic record, they're going to ask you um, your scores from different courses you have written. Then your primary education, where did you do it? Your secondary education, where did you do it? Your tertiary education, where did you do it? Then your total years of schooling. I think this is quite simple. It's very, very simple to fill. It's just like two or three pages. Okay, four pages and you'll be done. You don't need to write all manner of essays and all of that. They know that you're an undergraduate student. So it's a very simple form. Anybody can actually fill it and, and submit. Let me also share another one. So OK has promised to to share a list of the universities in Japan so that you could pick the one that you want to offer, especially the one that offer courses in English language. So Ngozi says, if you are not a WAI candidate, you can't apply for the scholarship. The truth is that, that you must have written WAI or you're about to write WAI. Yes, you must have your work certificate or NECO. They must be able to, um, you must be able to um, prove to them that you have done your secondary school and you have completed your, your, your external examinations with very good scores. Yes, so you must be a work candidate or you must have um, completed your work. So if you're, work, if you're in SS3 this year, you are qualified to apply because you might be writing work by the time the, the application is open. So I think there's a provision to indicate that you are waiting results so that by the time you go for the interview, by August, your results should be out and you should go with it to the interview. So this is not for this year's September, it is for next year. Their, their school starts in April next year. So by then, your work results must be out. Yes. Kindly drop more questions if you have any. Okay, so I'm going to post the rest of the of the forms you have to fill. I'm going to share them. The next form you're going to fill is um, sorry, not this one. Yes, so the next form you're going to fill is the scholarship recommendation form. <clears throat> so it is the embassy itself. You're going to fill in the, the form and you submit it to the embassy. So it is the embassy who are going to recommend you. So, but you fill this form. It's very simple as well. Like this is like the cheapest, the easiest scholarship I've ever encountered because these people, I think the way they do things, I've been, I've been following this scholarship for a while and it's this same form. They are not changing it. If you look at it, you see that it's almost like, I think it's like, uh, um, uh, uh, it's like they use typewriter or something. So it is so simple to apply. Anybody can pick up the form and fill it. And it's still this same form. I used to look at this, their, their scholarship, their applications, like a few years back, and it's still the same form. They're not even like trying to make it modern or open a special online platform. No, 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 no. 
Just download the form, fill it, and take it to the Japanese embassy. That's all. Go and submit it. Go and drop it there in their in their mailbox. You don't. They don't even need to see you. They'll be the ones to invite you for for the for the um, interview. So for those of you who who would want to apply, I would download the form. We'll fill it together. You can mobilize me. I can go and drop the forms for you at the at the Japanese embassy. When I'm I'm free, when I'm, I have the time, I can go and drop it there, such that when you're invited for the interview, you will now think of how to um, travel down to Abuja for the physical interview, for the first screening, before the, the final selection. So it's a very simple one and quite easy to understand. OK, I'm going to share the last document, which is the Certificate of Health. OK, Ngozi said, OK, purity. Purity the favor says, how can we get the form? I will share the link with you. Let me drop the link here so that you can go and um, and download it there and start filling. I'm dropping the link on the chat. If you go on Google, you can look for MEX scholarship study in Japan. I think that's the general website until we, we, we will keep our eyes open to see when the Japanese embassy will also open up their, their own, will also announce their own application. So that's the link to where this form, you can go there and download it, okay? Okay, let me share the last one. That is the health form. That should be this one. So that's what the certificate of health looks like. Just your normal info, your gender, your name, your date of birth. Then the, the doctor or the physician or even the nurse who look at your blood pressure, they, they, they will understand this better. Then, you, so they are the ones that will fill this, all these ones, and then they just want to know that you are in the right um, state of health to undergo undergraduate studies. So the physician will sign here, and then here, in view of the applicant's history and the above finding, is it your observation that he, that his or her health status is adequate to pursue studies in Japan. All he needs to say here is yes or no, with his address and all of that. So it's a very simple one. You're going to download this form and take it to the health practitioner to help you fill it in. As simple as that. All right, so that's it about this info session on MEX scholarship for undergraduate studies in Japan, um, when with the scholarship for master's program, yes, it's also um, announced same time. So both the undergraduate, the master's, PhD, they're all announced at the same time. So you can also um, look at the master's studies as well. Just Google Max, Max um, scholarship for master's students go to study in Japan, and then you get all the information. So, but I am more um, interested in our undergraduate students because I have a small um, initiative where we call the Girls Arise, where we try to support young girls and women, especially the ones from rural areas, the ones from um, low-income households, the indigent students, 
who don't have source of support for their undergraduate studies or even master's studies. So we have a platform where we 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 provide support, we provide resources and trainings for personal development, both business, education, job, career, every form of support that we can give, we provide that at Girls Arise. Our objective is that as a young girl, your family background should not be a challenge for you when you want to pursue your career, when you want to pursue your dreams and your goals. Yes, using myself as an example, I came from a very, very um, a poor background, but today I'm happy. I am a master's student. I'm a master's graduate from the United Kingdom. I'm pursuing my career. I'm pursuing all my dreams. My background was not a reason for me to, to settle for low life, no. So I use this opportunity to encourage every other young girl there that your background should not be a reason for you to, to remain small, you know, when you know that you can do a lot. Yes, you can do a lot. God has given you talent. God has given you the brain. God has given you the beauty. All you need is that self-confidence to, to pursue the things that he has already um, uh, um, embedded in you. So join that platform. Uh, most of the people here, I'm happy that most of those who have joined this, most of those who have joined this um, training, this info session today are from, by, are from the Girls Arise Initiative. Yes, I'm, I'm happy. Please, we'll be hosting more. Um, try and be a part of it. Thank you very much, Ejiro, for supporting us with your platform as well. This is Ejiro Matilda Ikoko. She also Hi. is <laughs> she's a PhD student. And she also graduated from the UK with the support of the Commonwealth Scholarship along with me. And she has been a huge support for me. She has been a sister, a friend. She has ah, been okay. a fellow. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I, I'm joining in. I had to look for um, good like, but I'm glad I can join. So good. OK. So say hi to our viewers. And most of them are from the Girls Arise Initiative. Oh, oh, great. So, hi, everyone. And um, thank you. I can see we had um, music chat and a lot of um, responses, which is good. I'm really happy that people are actually um, listening and getting um, help. And thank you, um, Ginika, for your passion to support youth. That's really amazing. Thank you so much. And I thank hope you. you, you know, it's so I want to say this because I'm a bit, um, okay, let me say this. I, I know there is uh, a lot of information out there, but one thing you should know is um, it's not just about Ginica or the speakers speaking, but you need to go back and apply what you've learned. So that when you come next time, and you, you can have more questions or personal questions to ask. So please, I know um, this session might be for free, but they are very valuable. Let's take advantage of it. So thank you, Ginica, and please over to you, continue. Okay, yeah, we're already wrapping it up. It has been a very oh, long great. evening. Great. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be leaving the session now. <clears throat> All right, bye. Bye, everyone.